Let my mouth be filled with your praise that I may sing aloud. My lips shall shout for joy when I sing to you. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you gave your holy church, Blessed John of Avila, as doctor. Grant that what he taught when moved by the Divine Spirit may always stay firm in our hearts. And as by your gift we embrace him as our patron, May we also have him as our defender to entreat your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Some who had come down from Judea were instructing the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the Mosaic practice, you cannot be saved. Because they aroused no little dissension and debate by Paul and Barnabas with them, it was decided that Paul, Barnabas, and some of the others should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and presbyters about this question. They were sent on their journey by the church and passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, telling of the conversion of the Gentiles and brought, that, and brought great joy to all the brethren. When they arrived in Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church as well as by the apostles and the presbyters and they reported what God had done with them. But some from the party of the Pharisees who had become believers stood up and said, it is necessary to circumcise them and direct them to observe the Mosaic law. The apostles and the presbyters met together to see about this matter. The word of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoice because they said to me, we will go up to the house of the Lord. And now we have set foot within your gates of Jerusalem. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Jerusalem built as a city with compact unity to it the tribes, go up, the tribes go up and tribes of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. According to the decree for Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord, in it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of David. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine and my father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit and every one that does, he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. 
Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains in the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire, and they will be burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we celebrate the memorial of what we'll probably call a rookie in our liturgical calendar in the Universal Church. Uh, his name is uh, St. John of Avila. Uh, perhaps uh, I said that he was a rookie because uh, he was only included in our general liturgical celebrations uh, two years ago, probably in the year 2000, 2021, when Pope Francis decided that every May 10th of each year will be uh, the day to celebrate the memorial of St. John of Avila. St. John was a diocesan priest from uh, Spain, and he lived during the 16th century when Spain was experiencing a golden age of sainthood, meaning it was at that time that the Lord has continued to raise up several or so many saints from the nation of Spain uh, during the 16th century, and he was one of those that became a saint. Uh, Pope Benedict XVI declared him a doctor of the church because a lot of his writings and preachings become very influential for the future ages of people who desire to grow in their faith in the church. Perhaps nothing much has been kind of said or is known about St. John of Avila, and probably because his fame, his life, and his works are overshadowed by the more uh, popular contemporaries of his time, such as St. Ignatius of Loyola, St. Teresa of Avila, or St. John of the Cross. Therefore, not much has been said of him. But St. John, uh, St. John of Avila was known as a master of sacred theology, meaning that he was somebody who was truly penetrated the depths of our theological understanding of God and of our faith and was able to translate that into, into everyday language, he was able to preach well uh, the, the theologies of our faith. And that's why a lot of people were truly influenced by his preaching, by his writings, and by his works. And he was a very excellent preacher that he was able to truly understand the nuances of scripture and was able to influence people as well because of his understanding of scriptures. And as I've said, probably his fame is overshadowed by his more contemporaries, uh, by, you know, by the fame of his contemporary saints. But one thing we can truly see about him is that if we try to study his life and his work, he actually has in some way an influence on some of these saints that have risen from Spain during the 16th century. Uh, just a couple of examples. Uh, St. John of Avila's preachings were the catalyst for two saints' conversion into the Catholic faith. St. John of God, who was the founder of the Order of the Hospitallers, and St. Francis Borgia, who would become a superior general of the Jesuits, the Society of Jesus. When they heard him preach, they decided to become Catholics, which paved the way for them to become saints. St. Ignatius of Loyola wanted St. John of Avila to become a part of his newly founded Society of Jesus. He did not become a member, but he became a director and a guide to a lot of the students of St. Ignatius of Loyola. And so in a sense, again, his writings and his works became an influence in shaping the form and the direction for the Jesuits. A lot of saints, bishops in, uh, in Spain, like St. Thomas of Villanova, or St. Francis of Ribisi, or even St. Peter of Alcantara, a Franciscan, used a lot of his works when they tried to reform their dioceses, or even their uh, Franciscan orders. And so, and then St. Teresa of Avila, uh, her work called the Autobiography was guided by St. John of Avila, and then St. John of the Cross, uh, even though he did not meet him personally, but a lot of St. John of Avila's disciples were used by St. John of the Cross to reform the Carmelite tradition. So we can just see a lot of these things of how he, even though he's not known as the rest of them, but has a hand in the way that their lives and their sanctity 
have been shaped. Uh, more often, when we talk about St. John of Avila, we, thought we think about the priesthood. And that is why he was known as the patron saint of the diocesan clergy in Spain because of a lot of his works and writing on the priesthood. But he is actually a saint for all of us because he was also a pioneer for what we call now as the universal call to holiness, wherein the call to holiness is not just for those who are ordained, but for all of us because holiness begins with baptism and our redemption. And this is probably why St. Our Lord gave us St. John of Avila as a gift to us today, because perhaps in our desire to grow in holiness, in our desire to live a life of sanctity, he can be someone who can guide us and help us in the same way that he did with all of those uh, major saints that we have come to know from Spain in the 16th century. So perhaps it's a good way for us to turn to him today and to ask for his guidance and influence and inspiration so that as we desire to grow deeper in our faith, as we desire to grow in holiness, that he can help us, influence us, to lead a life of holiness in such a way that will lead us to become saints in our own lives as well, the perfection of a life of holiness that God has called us. As we open ourselves to the wisdom of the Spirit, we now turn to the Father with all of our needs. For the leaders of the church and all who are charged with nurturing unity among God's people, let us pray to the Lord. For Christian churches and all communities of faith that are impaired by division and discord, we pray to the Lord. For those who are struggling in their relationships and all who are in conflict with one another, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick and all those whose pain isolate them from others, we pray to the Lord. And for all the intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Source of unity, you wish all your children to be joined in charity and peace. Increase in us the desire to live in harmony with all people, that we may overcome all that divides us, and so be a sign of unity of your kingdom, where Christ is Lord forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, who become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, to become our spiritual journey. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice which we gladly present on the feast day of blessed John of Avila be pleasing to you, O God. For taught by him, we too give ourselves entirely to you in praise, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. John of Avila, you bid your church rejoice. So too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with a company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth the Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope and Mario our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Apostles and Martyrs, with St. Genevieve and St. John, and with all the saints who shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory and the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Through Christ the Teacher, O Lord, instruct those who feed with Christ the living bread, that on the feast day of blessed John of Avila, they may learn your truth and express it in works of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Let us now pray the prayer of Pope Leo XIII to St. Joseph. To you, O blessed Joseph, we have recourse in our affliction, and having implored the help of your most holy spouse, we now, with hearts filled with confidence, earnestly beg you to take us under your protection. Through the sacred bond of charity, which united you to the Immaculate Virgin Mother of God, and by that fatherly love with which you embrace the child Jesus, we humbly beg you to look graciously upon the beloved inheritance which Jesus Christ purchased by his blood and to aid us in our necessities with your power and strength. Defend, O most watchful guardian of the Holy Family, the chosen children of Jesus Christ. Give from us, O most loving Father, all blight of error and corruption. Aid us from on high, most valiant defender in this conflict with the powers of darkness. And just as you once saved the child Jesus from mortal danger, so now defend God's holy church from the snares of the enemy and from all adversity. Shield us by your constant protection, so that supported by your example and strengthened by your help, we may be able to live a virtuous life, die a happy death, and obtain everlasting bliss in heaven. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection implored thy help or sought thy intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petition, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen.